Today we are going to cover op amps, or better still, operational amplifiers, which is what op amps are short for. And our question comes from Brett in Round Rock, Texas. Hi Paul, what are op amps? Um, their purpose in a circuit, and why these are the first to be changed. <laughs> That's, I'll explain why I'm laughing in a minute. When tweaking a piece of kit. I enjoy the forums and have learned a lot from them. And thank you. And Brett. Well, that's a, a really good question. And we always hear, don't we, that um, first thing we're going to do, we're going to swap out those nasty ass op amps because they're using cheesy ones or we're going to uh, do something different. So uh, we do hear that a lot. I have been as guilty as anybody in terms of <laughs> dissing op amps. And, and I'll give you a little bit of, uh, of history on that. Our very first product, the PS Audio Phono Stage years ago, had op amps at its core. And they were a, a classic uh, op amp uh, designed by a very famous designer, uh, Bob Widlar, one of the best designers uh, and, and one of the craziest guys ever to have, have graced electronics, Bob Widlar. If you, if you look him up, W-I-D-L-A-R, I believe, Wikipedia. Great story. I mean, this guy, he invented the current source, the 709C op amp. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, it, 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 half the time the guy was drunk. And, you know, he would, he would slug down a bottle of uh, something, whatever he drank, and get up and be smarter than 90% uh, of every engineer uh, on the floor. He was just a brilliant, genius, crazy guy. And Bob Widlar had designed an excellent sounding op amp called the 709C. It's what we used in our very first product, the Phono Stage. We had a pair of them, one op amp in the input. And that connected up to the uh, turntable cartridge, the phono cartridge, and a, a passive RIAA curve, which EQ'd the, it gave the reverse of what's on a record so that it turns out flat. And then another 709C op amp at the output of that. And we only could use Motorola's. Motorola made the best sounding 709C op amp at the time. And um, if, if, if you have a chance to watch the history of PS Audio, one of our earlier videos, you'll, you'll find out what we did to that 709 to make it sound good, because it has a Class B output stage. But um, op amps have been around for a very long time. They are building blocks of amplifiers. And, uh, in, and I know I am never prepared, but you'll be pleased to know that I am prepared this time. So here, my friends, is an op amp. I don't know how close I can get if you can see, but that little booger right there is a dual op amp. So this guy is a stereo op amp, this particular one, uh, and they come in all forms. They come in quads, singles. This particular one, oh Jesus, I don't even think I can see it. It's an analog devices. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't see it. I don't know if the camera's even going to pick this up, but maybe you can, maybe it's close enough where you can read what it is. Um, but um, this is an op amp. So the best way to describe an op amp is an audio building block. Now they can be used for non-audio tasks. They, they can run DC, they can run AC, but let's talk about them in terms of audio and strictly audio. So the basic building block of an op amp is, in essence, only two devices, two, two sections, okay? The input to an op amp is, is always a differential pair, which I'll explain in a second, and connected to that differential pair, and this, we're talking simple op amps here, because they can have hundreds of transistors inside of them, but we're talking about the simplest form of an op amp. And by the way, an op amp doesn't have to be a chip. I just showed you a chip, an IC version of an op amp, but that's not required. It doesn't mean chip, op amp doesn't equal chip, okay? An operational amplifier is a type of amplifier commonly found on chips. But if we use discrete transistors, we can have a very simple circuit, which is um, 
a pair of transistors called a differential pair, and that gives your two inputs, an inverting and a non-inverting input, and connected to that, a gain stage, which takes the collector out of one. You know what? Let me draw that for you. Hold on a sec. And here, here I said I was prepared. <laughs> well, all right, here we go. Up in. Glasses. Me, 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 me. All right, so here's our diff pair, right? All right. And then down here is minus, and up here is plus. Okay, so that's right. That's a little diff pair. These are those little arrows show the direction of current. So this is an NPN transistor, and that's an NPN transistor. If I just drew the arrow going the other way, it'd be a PNP transistor. And this here would be our plus input. This would be our minus input. This is the collector, the base, and the emitter of the transistor. This is represents a current source. It could just be a simple resistor. Um, so this is your basic differential pair amplifier, okay? And this is what the input of an op amp looks like. And if we were to draw the symbol of an op amp, it's just a triangle with three legs. And there's a plus input and a minus input and an output, okay? So I've just drawn the plus input, which is there, the minus input, which is there, okay? That's how you hook it up, and that's what... Then this... Let's just, we're doing a simple one. When I draw this little chingaderas right there, that means it's not connected. And that goes over to our gain stage. Now that's always going to be the opposite transistor, right? Like that, okay. And then the output comes out here. So there's your three plus, minus, ins, and your outs. So what happens is when, when current goes in here, this starts to conduct and a, a positive going wave here creates a negative going wave here. This does the opposite. And so a positive going wave here creates a larger positive going wave here. If you were to use this input, um, then the opposite happens when you put a positive going uh, wave in here, then it's going to do the opposite, and that inverts. And now typically what we wind up doing is, I don't want this to get too complicated, so I want to get back to your basic question, what, what the hell is this thing and what does it do, right? So here's our op amp, plus, minus, and then your output, right? Now if we want to hook this thing up, let's say we want to hook a phono cartridge, Here's a phono cartridge to ground. We hook it directly up here. Now we're going to put a little resistor there, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, and now the thing with op amps is you have to tie this inverting input somewhere. And so typically what happens is we might tie it here to ground. And this is the key thing. We're going to tie it back to the output. This is called feedback. Here's our feedback. And the gain of this device, of this op amp, um, is, is um, this resistor divided by this resistor. So if this is a 1K resistor and this is a 10K resistor, we have a gain of times 10, which is 20 dB, right? So that simple circuit, and, and if, if, it's this, if it's this chip, okay, it, it, it has, it's, it's got, you know, uh, plus, plus inputs, minus inputs for the voltage, plus and minus 15 volts, let's call it. And if I want, and if I literally take that chip and I just hook these things up, I take a 10K resistor and a 1K resistor and I put it to the appropriate little pins on there and the phono cartridge to there, and then I put a little resistor here to ground, um, I will get a 20 dB amplifier, and it's a really good amplifier. So that's when I say it's a basic building block, that's what that means. I can, I can take on my little breadboard, I can build an entire phono stage in about four and a half minutes, three minutes, bink, boom, 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 hook it up, power it up, boom, done. If you want a microphone preamplifier, no problem. You want more gain, change this to 100K. 
and all of a sudden now you have a gain of 100, which is 40 dB. There weren't any important notes on that. <laughs> anyway, that's what an op amp is. That's what an op amp does. It's a building block. Now, when we use op amps in today's modern PS audio circuits, um, we usually build discrete versions of those op amps, meaning that instead of using these chips, and sometimes we use chips, but mostly we build discrete versions, which means that we use individual transistors to build our own version of it. And so getting back to the basic question before this goes on too long, which I fear it already has, um, each of these chips or discrete op amps all sound different. They all have different open loop gains, closed loop gains, rise time speeds, the way they're manufactured, every which way. And every single one that you plug in, a Fairchild this, uh, an analog device is that, a TI this or that, they all are going to sound different. They all have different purposes and uh, reasons uh, for being. So I don't have time to get into all of that, but hopefully that'll tell you what an op amp is and why we would think about having different op amps for different purposes. Sorry it took so long. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.